Okay, so welcome back to Aquadoo. We're in our second to last task now because we're not doing this extension. Let's pretend it's not there. Um, so we're just doing a task seven now, which is to develop the part of the program that makes the legal move that has been selected by the player. So we've already checked if the move that they've made is legal or not. And so we've got that code. So we, if they've got through the hoops, then we know that the move is legal and we need to actually apply the logic based on that move. So we need to move their piece and remember that if they land then on a safe space, that's fine, nothing else has to happen. But if they land on a non-safe space, then we need to move the opponent's piece back to the start if that opponent's piece is also on that same space. And then it says the program should then display the board showing the new positions of the pieces. So let's uh, go about doing this. Let's go to our uh, replit and we're back in our move piece and we've selected a piece to move. Uh, we've checked if it's valid. We've checked that it can move. And now we need to add, add the code to actually do the move itself. So um, I could put that directly in here um, and that's probably the sensible thing to do. I could also write a separate subroutine um, to handle the move itself, but I think it will be okay to do it in here. So we're going to get rid of our if and we're going to start putting some code in here to make the move apply. So we're going to, uh, let's get started. Um, if it's play, now, ah, no, now I need to do a similar thing to what I did with my can I actually move routine, which was when I, I had a few things, which were the safe spaces and also the counter moves. Those proved quite useful, so I'm going to use those again. So let's have those. Let's do um, counter moves is going to be, um, sorry, I should have said if die is four, then counter moves is minus one. L, uh, yeah, else counter moves is equal to die. So if the dice is one, two, or three, then we're going to move the counter by one, two, or three. But if it's four, we move the counter by negative one. We then need our little safe spaces list. Uh, we don't need this, but it's a nice little extra. It does help. So if it's 1, 5, or 11, um, then we're going to want to test for that. So that's a nice little useful list for us to check in. Okay, well, let's get to the nitty-gritty of this. Let's say, well, it's if it's player turn is 1, so it's player 1's go. And let's assume that they've selected um, piece A. So uh, piece um, if piece to move uh, is A. So they're going to move piece A. So what's the first thing we need to check? Well, we need to um, move it, don't we? We need to move that piece. We know it's legal because we've already run the code to check that their move is legal. So uh, it must be legal move, uh, in which case we, we can move it. So let's take its player one and its piece A, so that's counter one. And whatever value they currently are, we want to add to it. So we're just going to say if P1 counter 1 is equal to P1 counter 1 plus the moves required by the die. Counter moves. It's either going to be minus 1 if it's a 4 or it's going to be 1, 2 or 3. So that's going to move that piece. Then we want to say, well, have I landed on the same spot as someone else? Now... If, so we could say, well, if it's a safe space, I don't care. So uh, let's only do this if, it's, if they're not on a safe space. So let's say, well, okay, if player one counter one is now uh, is not in, so the new value of their, their position, their new location, if that's not in one of the safe spaces, let's make that plural, safe spaces. So if it's not in a safe space, then we need to um, check, okay, is either of player two's pieces there. So let's say, well, if uh, player two counter one is equal to player one counter one, um, we need to send player two counter one back to the start. So we're just going to say player two counter one equals it one. And that sends it right back to the start again. Um, we could also do if, technically an elif would work here probably actually, uh, but let's just do if. If player two counter two, is equal to player one's new position for counter one. Then again, let's send player two counter two 
back to the start. Okay, so that's done the code for if it's player one's go and they've chosen to move counter A, then let's move counter A. And now if counter A is not in a safe space, let's check to see if um, they are occupying the same space as one of counter twos. And if they are, send counter twos piece, whichever one it is, one or two, back to the start. So that's done everything we need to do for player um, one if the piece they're moving is A. Let's now just basically copy and paste all of that, but do this now for Elif, the piece they want to move is B. And we just need to make a few tweaks, which is going to move player one counter two, player one counter two, player one counter two, player one counter two. Uh, that should have been player one counter one in the first instance, so let's fix that there. Okay, so that's done that, so that's replicated the same code. Um, because I've copied and pasted, that's an indication that I probably could have found a much more efficient way of doing this. Um, but do you know what? Right now, this method is kind of working, so I'm just going to go with it. But we probably should have come up with our own little subroutine where we passed in the particular counter we wanted to move, and it made the changes and did all the things it needed to do. And, and we could have just done this in a much neater way, but we haven't done that, so never mind. We're going to copy this entire block now for player two. So here we are, um, I've got if it's player one's go, and I need to go and if it's player uh, elif, it's player two's go. If they've chosen to move piece one, then it's P2 counter one, P2 counter one, P2 counter one. Right, and now of course P2 is referencing P1, so switch these around. So if player two is in that position, then we need the same position as player one, then we need to send player one back. So switch these around again. Okay. And let's tweak these as well. So it does get a little bit confusing by this stage. But logically, once you're finished, you can test your logic and say, okay. Have I, does this make sense? So again, if it's player two's go and they choose to move A, well, if player two counter one, let's move it. And if it's not in a safe space, if player one's counter one happens to be in the same place as player two counter one, send player one back to the start. If player one's counter two is in the same space as player two's counter one, um, move it back to the start. If player, and then obviously the same code for if it's B. If player two counter two, mo sorry, move player two counter two, and if that counter then isn't in a safe space, check, am I in the same place as player 1A? Send it back to the start. Am I in the same place as player 1B? Send it back to the start. So that's made the moves. If the player, if the, uh, if the player can move, then do the move. That's the move. You can sort of see why I was thinking about putting this in its own subroutine, because it's quite big, but we, it is a subroutine called move piece, so it probably does belong here um, and of course it will still call our code if it can't make a valid move then it will call that uh, it will it will tell the users that and they'll start this whole process again so I think that has covered task 7 that actually develops the part of the program that makes the legal move selected by the player if the player loads on the same, sp same space as an opponent then if it's not, if it is a safe space, nothing happens. But if it's not a safe space, send the other piece back to the start. The program should then display the board showing the new positions of the pieces. So let's just have a little look at our play game routine. Um, I'm going to suggest that um, we make the move, we change the turn, and we're going to need to show the board again. But actually, um, we then kind of want the whole thing to keep running around again and again, don't we? I'm going to get rid of my hard-coded little test there, by the way, and put the dice roll back in. So thinking back to our game playing routine, we want to show the board, roll the dice, uh, check if the player can move. If they can, may then move. Otherwise, tell them they can't, and it goes on to the next person's go. Then we want to change turn. And then I want this whole thing to keep looping around. So actually, I need a while loop for this. And let's have a control variable called game one. And let's start it at false. And we'll say while game one is false, then show the board. 
Roll the dice. Check if someone can move. Move if they can. And then change turns. And then show the board. Roll the dice. And it's going to keep doing that until the game's been won. So let's run our code and see if this kind of works. So, uh, play the game. Right, it's player one's turn. Press enter to roll the dice. Oh, of course I've started with my piece up here because I've hard-coded that. Uh, so, player one rolled a four. Select a piece to move back one space. Well, I, I have to move piece A, so let's move piece A. Ooh, I've got a problem on line 313. I'm referencing P1C1 before assignment. 313, 313, 313. Here we go, 313. Ooh, 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 I can't believe I did that. I haven't told Python I'm using global variables here. What a fool. Right, global, P1, C1, P1, C2, P2, C1, P2, C2, and bonus marks to you if you got that right instead of me. Let's try it again. Let's run the program. Let's play my game. Right, I'm gonna choose a piece to move. I've rolled a two, I'm gonna choose one to move. I'm gonna move piece B, please. Still got the same problem. Counter move reference before assignment. Fascinating. 307. Let's have a look at that then. Counter moves. Um, oh, I've done double equals. I should be assigning it, but I was testing its value. See, this is good little bit of testing. See, I'm proving to you that it doesn't work right every time. Okay, player ones go. Two, I'm rolling a die. This time I've rolled a one. At least I know my random dice works. And I'm going to move piece B. Hooray! That's moved piece B. And it's become player two's turn because I've got changed turns in there. So player two's going to roll the die. Player two rolled a three. Okay, select a piece to move three spaces. Uh, I'm going to move piece A. And that's moved piece A up the board. Fantastic. Okay, well, let's. It's player one's go. Let's roll the die. I've rolled a four. I have to move one back. Um, I'm going to move back piece A so I'm in a safe spot. So I've moved piece A back and it's player two's go. Press enter to roll the die. Uh, I've rolled a two and so uh, I'm going to move uh, B. Okay, it's player one's go. Enter to roll the die. I selected, I've rolled a three. One, two, three would get me on the safe spot. So let's move B. Okay, I've got both of my pieces on the safe spot. It didn't stop me doing that. Yeah, I was quite happy with that. Player twos go. Ends to roll the die. I've rolled a four. Ah, Right, let's do some testing. Theoretically, I should not be able to move counter A back one because I'm already occupying it, that row with counter B. So let's see if uh, that's true. So I'm going to try and move piece A. You cannot move that piece. Darn it, I must select the other piece. Okay, I'll have to move B and it's brought B back. Fantastic, right, player one's go. I've rolled a one, let's move play piece A. Player two's go. Can't believe it, ah, finally I might sting it. Uh, no, one, two, I can't do it, I've rolled a three. I'm trying to land two on the same row as one, but it, I can't, if I, I might as well move B, but if I do, I'm gonna go to my safe spot, so it shouldn't matter. So now they're both on the safe spot, but at least it proves that works. Player one's go. I've rolled a four. Yes, I can move B back, which should knock A back to the start. Let's see if it does. I'm gonna move B backwards one. Yes, it did, and it knocked A back to the start. So my game logic is working. I'm pleased to say. The only problem is I've got no code to actually show when the game's over and when someone's won. Um, so that's the only thing I'm missing now. So I'm gonna stop my game. And I'm going to suggest that um, I'm going to scroll through the move piece code uh, quite slowly again. And I'm going to ask you to make sure that your code looks the same as mine for move piece. So I'm just going to do a, a slow scroll now. Okay, and you must pause your code or pause your video and check your code lines up. Check your indentation is correct as well. That's a very easy place to make mistakes. This is quite a long one, so you've got to make sure your indentation is lined up correctly.
Okay, and now I'm going to go on to play game, and I want you to check that the modifications that I've made to play game um, are also there in yours as well. So I've now got a game one is false, while game one is equal to false. Show the board, roll the die, check if a player can move, move the piece if they can, otherwise tell them they can't, and it goes on to the next player, and change turn. I'm also going to make one final change before I <laughs> stop this particular episode, and I'm just going to set counter one to go back to the start at the beginning okay we are nearly done uh, the last thing we're going to need to do is the last task which is to develop the part of the program that checks if a player has won the game after each move so we're going to do that in our next um, episode of this series